For the last 12 months, I've been using DaVinci Resolve as my main editing platform. Prior to that, I was using Premiere Pro, and while it was good and okay and got the job done, I feel like DaVinci Resolve, hands down, is the winner, saving me time, adding new features, it's innovative, and you can't ignore the auto save feature. So today, I don't wanna necessarily break down and give you a full tutorial of DaVinci Resolve, but just highlight some of my favorite features. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18, and uh, this is a project that I work with Flux Studio and Gallery, and we'll kind of be using this as some examples. And the first thing I wanna go over is uh, keyboard shortcuts, and just a, a few of these that I find uh, really helpful. Again, this is not an in-depth tutorial on DaVinci Resolve, just some highlights and features. So the first keyboard shortcut is A on my keyboard, which is to select clips forward on all tracks, and simply, what that does is to select all the clips to the right of the playhead, which is really helpful if you've got a lot of video clips and audio clips underneath. You can select that, move that along as needed wherever you have your playhead, just hit A, move that along and insert clips, whatever you need to do. Moving on to another shortcut is G on my keyboard and simply that closes all the gaps. So as you see, I have a lot of B-roll clips through here and I've got all these gaps just like this. And instead of moving them one by one, all like that, I can simply select these, hit G and away she goes. All right, the next shortcut is simply helping us cut all our B-roll and all our raw footage. We have all of this from day one, and it is cut up, but just for sake of example, I'm gonna show you what I do. So simply, I'm just finding an in and out point that I like, um, and then inserting that in the timeline. Now, the keyboard shortcut that I use is N to set the in point, M to set the out point, and then J to insert it in the timeline. Now that or by default, DaVinci Resolve has that set to I and O, in and out, makes sense, and you can keep that the same, but I like to keep things, everything close to my, uh, to my hand so I don't have to move around the keyboard too much. So I simply am, again, let's go to another clip, finding something that we like. So we're hitting N on the keyboard, in point, M, J, pops right there in the timeline, and then over time, I mean, you're doing this and you can cut through you know, loads of footage, loads of clips, maybe 200 clips in a matter of 20, 30 minutes, depending on how fast you're going through it. And you're just blazing through N, in point M, J, pop that into the timeline and you're building up all of your B-roll, which is great for reference. Another shortcut that I use is L on my keyboard and that simply speeds up the clip, which will speed up your editing when listening to long interviews like this. So this would be normal time, with one guy in Sped Montrose up. when I worked for about a year and a half, I apprenticed with him, Bill Wilson, great guy. He actually fires some kilns and we're gonna see some hot. And you can speed through that interview, cutting out the gaps, the questions, and anything you don't like really helps to speed up the process. So another keyboard shortcut is trim mode. Uh, so instead of going in here and say, I wanna move the clip and extend it here, shorten it here, throw it back in. Um, instead, you can hit T on your keyboard and then move that along Right so like when that, they and it adjusts the clip. All right, so those are just a few shortcuts. Obviously, you can add a lot more and there's a lot more that I use, but those are some of the ones that I wanted to highlight. Moving on to a really cool feature and that would be right here and that is smart bins. So I've got a few smart bins set up and what that is basically, uh, any project that you open up, uh, it will organize your clips based off of uh, what you have set here. So I have all my 24 frame clips, all my 60 frame clips, which in this project I didn't have any, um, all media, which is great to just access that all at one time. In order to create a smart bin, just right click add a smart bin and then enter the right details right here through the drop down menu. Um, and you can create a smart bin, rename it however you'd like. One of the greatest time saving features of the smart bins is simply timelines. And that puts all my timelines basically, in I guess you could say one folder or one smart bin. And in order to do that, you go up to DaVinci Resolve here, preferences, go to user, editing and make sure that smart bins for timelines is selected and that will appear in every project, which is great to keep things organized. 
So another great feature of DaVinci Resolve is power bins, and that's right above smart bins here. And basically that keeps all of your media assets uh, in every project that you open up in DaVinci Resolve. It's really nice. So you can drop in um, sound effects, music, uh, logo assets for recurring clients, for recurring projects like YouTube videos, all of that. It's really great. Uh, so for instance, I have all of my logos in here that I can drag and drop instead of importing them from a, a folder on my computer every time. It's all right there in the project. Really helpful. You can add adjustment layers that have specific effects. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff with the power bins. Really helpful tool. All right, another great feature in DaVinci Resolve is voice isolation. One of the best, easiest features uh, to just clean up your sound. So if you listen to this clip here, uh, this is from a project uh, with Masa Seed Farm, and uh, this is from audio from my camera. I do have a Rode mic attached to it, um, but I'm about 10, 12 feet from him. No lav mic, this is simply the Rode mic, and this is what it sounds like, no voice isolation. So consequently, a lot of this is purchased seeds from some of the highly reputable companies. All right, so obviously you can hear some ambient noise, road noise, some background noise like that. Let's turn on, on voice isolation, drop that down to, let's say about 30%, listen to that. And so consequently, a lot of this is purchased seeds from some of the highly reputable companies. Amazing, truly amazing. Moving on to dual timelines. Now this is such a great feature for me. I've got my main timeline open and then also the B-roll timeline open at the same time. So I can preview my B-roll clips and I can also reference my main timeline. So if I wanted to put a B-roll clip in at this point, I can go back up here. Let's say I wanted this clip. I drag, drop, right into my main timeline and there it is. Instead of copying and pasting and throwing that uh, or going back and forth from each timeline, it's such a simple way of doing that. And in order to do that, you go up to this window here. And so I'm just gonna exit out of that. So this is what it normally looks like. You go up here and you add a timeline just like that and then reference whichever timeline that you want to see. Something else that I like is dynamic project switching. And basically that allows you to go between one project to another without having to open and close each project, but you can reference the clips, copy and paste and throw clips uh, into other projects. So let me show you how you could do that. Just go down to the home button here. Um, let's find a project, uh, right click, make sure that dynamic project switching is turned on, double click on the project, so as you see here, this project is opened up and this is called Legacy and I could simply switch in between the Legacy project and go to the Flux Studio um, project simply by clicking through this tab here. I can copy and paste clips or reference one project to another without having to open or close it. Really great time saver. All right, another great feature is what's called dynamic zoom. And that simply zooms in or out on your clip, depending on what you want it to do. And uh, so you go up here to the inspector panel and uh, toggle on to dynamic zoom. And this clip, let me show you what it looks like without it. Just tie together, create a diaphragm. All right, then I'm gonna toggle on dynamic zoom. Just tie together, create a diaphragm. So as you see, it creates a little bit of energy, a little bit of tension, and it's zooming out of the clip. If I uh, click here and swap that, it will actually zoom in. This is tied together, create a diaphragm. And to me, these are all just time savers. Of course, I could keyframe that out, do that myself, but it's just so nice to toggle that on. And then if you go over here, um, you can click on the dynamic zoom panel and then adjust as needed. If you wanted to zoom more into your starting point, less or more. Obviously, this is gonna be a little crazy here. Just tie together, create a diaphragm. You can make those adjustments so quickly and easily. I just love the time-saving feature that the Dynamic Zoom offers. Another great time saver is the Crop Tool and Grid. Uh, so if I go over here, I can uh, go down to Crop and I can come down to this image down here and simply crop this out. This would be great for any short form content that you need to resize. But then even if you wanted to go a step further and make sure the proportions were right, if you added multiple clips in the same way, you can add this effect down here called the grid 
and put it wherever I need to. But having the crop tool really handy without having to use a mask and then having the grid tool handy right there as well is so helpful. You can use it for a variety of different things. Another great feature is what's called super scale. And I just found this out uh, recently. What it does is basically scales up low quality, low resolution uh, video clips and makes it just look a little sharper. Obviously you don't wanna do that with nice video clips, uh, but this would be a great example of that. This was shot uh, with, I don't know what kind of camera, but a behind the scenes shot of us on our short film. And I'm going to, as you can see kind of here, it's a little, Sorry, it's a little blurry. So I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna to toggle on super scale and that's just in the inspector panel. And automatically, it just looks a lot crispier. You don't want that digital look, but this really saves that image um, nicely. <clears throat> I'm gonna zoom really close. Oh, there we go. And toggle that on and off. It's just like a nice, nice look. I'm gonna play that back with it off and zoom out. That is without it. This is with the super scale toggled on. Just a really nice little feature. All right, moving on to a little bit of a color correction, color grade. I'm not gonna show you my whole process because I don't think it's it's great, uh, but a couple of features that I do like with DaVinci Resolve, as opposed to other ones like Premiere Pro and Final Cut, um, let me just create a couple nodes here, and i um, just gonna add a Rec. 709 conversion LUT here. And one thing I'm gonna point out is the ability to uh, adjust the skin tones in a really easy way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, as you can see here on the vector scope, uh, we've got the uh, skin tone line is right here. And what I'm going to do is get the qualifier. I'm gonna come up here, get the qualifier, grab her skin tones. I'm going to turn on the mask here. Maybe throw up the denoise, kind of zoom in a little bit just to see what's going on here. Just like that. And as you can see on the vector scope, um, we're a little, a little on the green side. Um, so let's go over here and adjust that ever so slightly. Actually, we're going to move this just a little bit right here. You're gonna see that skin tone adjustment there and on the vector scope. So let's see the final result with that. And I'm gonna to just toggle that on and off. See how it just looks a little green and now a little bit warmer skin tones. And I love that process. It was so simple to get. And you can uh, grab a still, apply that grade to other images uh, if the white balance is similar. And uh, just a quick, easy tip to get um, the right skin tones in DaVinci Resolve. Another thing is adding a little bit more contrast to her face. As you can see, it's kind of a flat uh, image. Uh, there's not a lot of contrast in the lighting here. It looks nice. Uh, there's a lot of great depth. It's a good composition. Uh, but if we can create a little bit more contrast, let's see if we can do that with a power window. So I've created a node here. Let me create one more. And this is gonna be our power window. So I'm gonna go down to the ellipse tool, spread this out, a vignette just a little bit. Gonna keep it motivated like the light is coming from here. And then it's feathered out a bit. Um, I'm gonna come over to this node and drop down the exposure and this is gonna drop down kind of everything around and increase that power window. Now this is a little much, I don't wanna go we want to keep things subtle. Less is more when color grading. And I just want to show you the before and after. So this is before and then adding just some subtle contrast there. I don't know if even we can, oops, head on the wrong node. We can move this and maybe even shrink this in just a touch, bringing it in ever so slightly. <clears throat> and then just kind of seeing what that looks like. That's that's really sharp there. 
I like that. That was before without our power window adding. Boom, it's a nice subtle touch. So that about wraps it up with this DaVinci Resolve feature highlight, not a tutorial breakdown, but just highlighting some of my favorite features. Um, if you want more videos on DaVinci Resolve, let me know, put it in the comments, but uh, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all the things, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have yourself a great day.